Teachers love using music to teach children because it helps make information fun and it also helps make that information stick. And that's why some teachers in Alberta say they're concerned that several songs recommended for their curriculum have racist connotations. Joining me now is elementary teacher Stephanie Sherman Olson. Stephanie, thanks for joining us this morning. Thanks for having me, Lindsay. Okay, take us back to October. That's when you saw a leaked draft of songs that were going to be recommended by the government of Alberta to teach kindergarten to grade two students. What are some of the songs on the list that have either racist, sexist, or violent lyrics? Mm -hmm. So from the original list in October, we saw many titles that were just lifted straight from an American curriculum document that's since been adjusted. But many of the songs remain. And some songs um, like Skip to My Lou, Oh, Susanna, I've Been Working on the Railroad, lots of songs that we all grew up with actually are steeped in really problematic um, histories, which include derogatory language towards the African-American and Black communities, as well as um, histories within blackface minstrelsy. And what are your concerns specifically about how these songs with darker meanings could manifest in the way that a child looks at the world? Well, I think that even if these songs, a lot of them, it's, it's more about the history that they exist in. The lyrics themselves aren't necessarily problematic. But the fact that these songs emerged from such a problematic point in time and were used in such a way, we're only just to Google away from learning what these songs actually are and what they mean. And lyrics are adjusted over time, but it doesn't take long for these original lyrics to surface um, when we're singing with multi-generations or, or whatnot. And so, I think that at any point a child in their life can figure out the history of these songs and what does it do to a child if at any point in their life they find out that the music that they were taught by a teacher who was told, you know, they were telling their students that this is the music worth teaching, this is the music worth knowing, and this is how we're going to engage in this subject material, is actually incredibly problematic. And, and it just, it would be incredibly unsettling, particularly for students who are black or, uh, or children of color. And underrepresented songs, too. What, what wasn't on the list? What would you like to see more of? So I think that, um, yeah, the racist and blackface minstrel songs are obviously a problem, but overwhelmingly, this list represents only a white Anglo-European um, or American perspective. And so I think about who is not represented on this list. And when we are only selling to our children music from this very particular lens, what does that do to the children who are outside of that? And what does that tell them about their value? Um, and, and the music, the incredible music that exists in the world that is outside of that small scope. So it's also by what we're silencing by not including it in the list. And, and we're elevating a certain kind of music as more important than others. Do you think this is just a question of laziness? I mean, when I look at the, the most recent song on that list, it's 1959. That's right. <laughs> and uh, Rodgers and Hammerstein, I believe. And so it's, um, I think it is laziness. I think it's also about being out of touch, you know, we have people creating curriculum who aren't necessarily experts. Um, and, and the reality is that this discourse has been happening with music educators um, for a very long time. And teachers have been erasing these songs from their own practice for years and years and years. And so the fact that someone who's in charge of writing curriculum uh, would make these ill-informed decisions is not only laziness to me, but it's, um, it's just being completely out of touch with, with practice. And so what does that say? Stephanie, we appreciate your time this morning. Thanks so much. Thank you for having me, Lindsay. And I do want to mention that we reached out to the government of Alberta, and here in a statement they said this. The document in question was a very early draft from June. A revised draft rightly removed these songs. This draft curriculum was reviewed by hundreds of teachers. The list of songs in the final curriculum are a resource that teachers can use if they choose to do so. No songs will be mandatory. Thanks for watching. If you like this, be sure to subscribe here. And you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.